Korea is not interested in the potato chips. <laughs> it's interested in the computer chips. It's interested in the batteries. It's interested in cell phone production. And the fact is, is that makes Korea rich. And even if China closes its borders to Korea, Korea is still producing these things that will create more wealth. This is what Smith never understood, that the brain industry and then the actual, the actual production of high tech and complex industry creates more wealth on the national site. Mm -hmm. So also, by the way, Korea does the other thing, which is not very, Korea does have money going into higher education. There are mm -hmm. private universities, there are public universities. Korea, like Japan and like Hong Kong, are the two are the three places with and with China too, with elite universities outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. But but really Korea and Japan are the only place that I know where elites will often choose mm -hmm. their own top national university. This mm -hmm. is real wealth, you guys. Uh -huh. So, by the way, you want Securonomics? Have great universities. Mm -hmm. I mean, so these are hard questions. They're dangerous. I don't mm -hmm. know, for example, if the, the new Biden policy is totally right, but part of it makes an enormous amount of sense. Also, when you see the center of the United States, which used to be the center of manufacturing in the world, also the Northeast, looks like it was bombed. Mm -hmm. It is like third world destroyed, okay? Mm -hmm. They now have low-grade service industries. That gives us low growth, low living standards. It does not give us a, a tax base that can support us. Mm -hmm. So I hate to say it, but if we don't get a better industrial strategy, parts of America won't do well. At the same time, we've remained incredibly dynamic mm -hmm. with our market dominance. So again, hard questions. I don't know if I answered the questions, but mm -hmm. I, I wanted to put the stakes out there. At the end of the day, there is no purely free market answer to this. That I can say. Hmm. Pure. What you have said reminds me of me again of the uh, Jean Baptiste Colbert in the in the 16th, 17th century, because um, as you have said, is uh, that so called secure economics, if anything, is a very very uh, kind of a sophisticated sophisticated uh, kind of thing. So. What we need is a kind of prudence, political prudence, or some kind of very thoughtful kind of consideration about those things. But that requires a very highly skilled statesmanship, like Jean Baptiste Colbert had in his time. But I doubt whether we have that kind of a great politicians and policymakers nowadays in the 21st century. We must have had some people somewhere mm -hmm. because, I mean, look. Korea's story is kind of miraculous. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. think about when I was a kid, the situation coming out of the Korean War, the Peninsular War of South and North Korea. I mean, these were <laughs> destroyed places. And look at Korea now. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of unbelievable. So clearly yeah. some did something right. Now, what they actually did is there is no specific ideology for that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like making a stew with the ingredients you have in your refrigerator. But if you're a really good cook, you mm -hmm. can make a great stew without a recipe. Mm -hmm. and the Koreans did not use free market mm -hmm. policy to create mm -hmm. the basis of their economy. They used all sorts of different ingredients. Okay. Um, and so, and clearly, and this is an uncomfortable question because mm -hmm. many of the people that did this, and this is one of the problems, I believe, mm -hmm. and also this market thought, is mm -hmm. we're fine that certain authoritarian regimes, not mm -hmm. all of them, can be good at building economies. My research shows that authoritarian regimes do not stay rich for more than 70 years. I have never seen around mm -hmm. 70 years an authoritarian economy that maintains its wealth for more than 70 to 100 years. Historically, England, Holland, um, America, they stay rich, and, and even France, for a much longer time. They're more mm -hmm. open societies, right? Um, however, we were told by free market theory, thinkers that without democracy, we couldn't get rich. Now, this is sad to find out. This is just not true. Um, and the story of Korea's wealth production is not just a story about democracy. It is partially a story of democracy and free markets, but it's also a story of monopolies, 
of hothouse protected flowers Mm -hmm. of oligarchs and dictators, which is like a really mixed up story. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of, of, of fighting back from trade unions. It's complex stuff, but it doesn't fit into one single ideology. So, um, it's, uh, it, you know, many things occur to me because the, uh, that free market has been um, the most important catchword in Korean politics and economics nowadays since when, especially since uh, 2022, when our newly elected uh, president, he confessed, confessed to say that uh, he's a big uh, fan of uh, Milton Friedman's book, Capitalism and Freedom. So after that, he is, uh, he, puts that word in his mouth every time he is addressing economic issue, free market, free market, free market. So it is a kind of a, you know, a repeated kind of education for Korean audience nowadays. So we have absolutely no intention of implicating you to Korean politics, but uh, could you, in a general level, could you uh, share your wisdom about uh, that kind of, uh, you know, one-sided belief in the free market thought, especially in this time of uh, 2000? 2020s okay the best way to answer such a question is with more questions so who likes free markets the most now in korea mm-hmm. well it's often the chaebol right right yes they're they like this what do the chaebol represent now i want to just now immediately tell you mm-hmm. and i know some people will be upset how much i admire these companies i mean <laughs> the fact the history of korea with companies like Hyundai and Samsung literally stuns me. I am stunned. I sit in the the fact that Hyundai has just become with Genesis. I really mean this, the most reliable automobile in the world with Lexus. Mm -hmm. Americans, Germans can't do this. This is very hard to do. It might sound superficial, but it's very hard to do. Okay. And for the first time, you know, Genesis is charging full prices in America. They used to be cheap. I was looking for one the other day and I was like, oh my God, that's an expensive car. <laughs> I mean, it's like, however, I would buy that car over a German car like that. I would never buy a German. I own German cars. I lease them, but they're not very well made. Mm-hmm. They look good. They perform well. But the Koreans managed to take this, also this Japanese tradition, but go for, at mm-hmm. this point further. I mean, Hyundai's this amazing story. So I admire the Chaebol. Therefore, the Koreans are going to have to struggle with the history of the Chaebol to understand if what we're saying right now is free market thought. We have a market dominance. So I think you were there, Jibin, when I talked to students Mm -hmm. in South Korea. And the South Korean students all said to me, what kind of country do I live in where I have to work for four companies or I won't have a good life? This is all I think about is working for these four companies. So what do we call this period in, in Korean economic history? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a period where the Chaebol still dominate, mm-hmm. but then they pay for a free market institute. Mm-hmm. Do the Chaebols want free markets? Well, I assume they kind of do because they dominate so totally. Mm-hmm. So is it possible for smaller companies to compete with Chaebol? Well, many people say in Korea that it's not possible for mm-hmm. smaller companies to compete no. and that the Chaebol also makes sure of that. Mm -hmm. So when we hear free market, I ask you, are we really hearing free market Mm -hmm. or are we hearing the interests of these massive companies, which again, Mm -hmm. have been incredibly successful. So I'm not saying that that might, that might not be wrong, (laughs) but it might not be free markets either. Is that a diplomatic way of answering your question? Mm, No, no, I don't think so. Because uh, what you have said has a nuance and uh, it uh, very much uh, reflects on the uh, complexity, complexity of the Korean reality. Who are the president's biggest supporters? That's one question. Mm-hmm. Um, so whom does this free market um, uh, discourse benefit? And who does he think it will benefit? Who, who does he say will benefit from this? Um, and the question is, and the point is, is, again, I'm not saying that it's wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that it doesn't mean exactly that. Mm-hmm. Because you do have a market dominance, which is very, we could say, nearly monopolistic in certain cases. Mm-hmm. And therefore, if they're supporting free markets, mm-hmm. it might mean that in Korea, we do have market issues of competition. I don't know. I'm just suggesting that could be the case. Okay. Um, 
But then there's another thing that I found historically, especially um, studying the rise of um, Asia, but also Germany, where my family is also from and where they are industrialists. The Germans, I want you to think about creative destruction, Joseph Schumpeter's free market idea. Right. Um, do the Che balls like creative destruction? <laughs> Sorry. Because they don't want to be destroyed. They don't want to be creatively destroyed. Do, do you think that German companies, we have the same companies in Germany for 100 years. Right. They don't want to be creatively destroyed, for better or for worse. By the way, America now has, is literally America's entire uh, market capitalization is two companies. Mm -hmm. Like 65 or more percent of all market capitalization Mm -hmm. is like just two or three companies in the United States. Mm -hmm. Is this a good thing? Probably not. Is it working? Yes, mm -hmm. most, but not for everybody because wealth inequality is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So we're stuck with really complicated questions that the word free market does not necessarily address. So what we, what we have been uh, the talk, the discussing about is the very difficult issue of the uh, complexity of reality and uh, we need to have some uh, sophisticated viewpoint and uh, so on and so on. And that's related with the next question is uh, my co-interview co and my colleague that, uh, yeah, it's his question. One, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a hard one. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, you know, yeah, to, to summarize the question, um, we can understand that, that monopolization and the uh, indulgence of the market institution could lead to the uh, rent seeking behavior and the monopolization of, of power and so on. So it is not very uh, wise to blindly believe in the free market myth or any, any, nothing like that. But when it comes to the high tech, economy, high tech companies, uh, which is supposed to increase the productivity per se, uh, should we think in different perspective? I mean, you know, they are enhancing the productivity. Should we have the, so bifurcate the perspectives upon the freedom of liberty of our corporations in this case? What do you think? I mean, this is such a hard question. So I will, I'll tell another story. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> one of my best friends from college is one of the chief architects of AI at Google. And w during COVID, he came into my garden and we drank some wine and we talked. And I said, I mean, who's, who is creating AI right now? It's America, China, and then a little bit Russia. And I said, is Europe doomed without an operating system, without a system in which everyone has to come to to operate? What will Europe do? And he said, they are in terrible trouble. Okay. Um, now, that was before AI made its jump. But I'll tell you, I think he's, we haven't spoken recently, I think, because he's one of the people that made this jump. He did this. He's one of the great pioneers of AI. This morning or last night, mm -hmm. uh, the major council of research in, um, in Britain, Tony Blair and William Haig, made a declaration that the government had to immediately invest a billion pounds, which is nothing by American standards, it's not enough, mm -hmm. into AI or Britain risk becoming irrelevant in the world. Mm -hmm. This is what my friend told me two years ago in COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I think it might even be too late. Wait, in America, who has AI in America? Two companies, right. Google and Microsoft. My friend worked at both of those companies. <laughs> there are not that many people that can do this. By the way, uh -huh. he was extremely concerned about China beating on AI because he said it would be terrifying because of the authoritarian and totalitarian view. Right. A totalitarian nationalist AI is absolutely a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Now, is the other AI better? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> but we're at a point now where we have a monopoly on AI. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the Americans, for the moment, have beaten the Chinese. It's two companies. Mm -hmm. um, he told me government regulation would be a disaster. I'm now just relaying things because these are hard questions. Government regulations would be a disaster because the government has no comprehension of the technology of AI. Only these architect engineers do. Mm -hmm. So any government interference in this would be a disaster. I believed him at the time. I said, America... If we're going to have a democratic AI has to lead this, mm -hmm. is America going to stay democratic? I don't know. <laughs> we can have our own authoritarian AI. Many Americans want an authoritarian government. Mm -hmm. They are not, um, they are not, let's say, very aware of mm -hmm. history. Um, 
So all the other thing is this, do you really think that government can regulate mm -hmm. high tech? I mean, the government, just the people, the people who are doing high tech, mm -hmm. you're getting these brains. There's a high competition for them globally. There are only a few at the very top. And that I actually know mm -hmm. that this stuff is really hard. You have to be born this kind of person who can, who can do this stuff at a very high level. Often these talents are, you're born with them. You grab these people. It's like playing piano. You right. get these people who can do it. It's, by the way, it's the same thing, the piano playing, novel writing. So you get everyone from Balzac to, to, um, mm -hmm. to, to Mozart. It's this kind of, it's without art though. That's the sad thing. That's the sad thing. Mm -hmm. So what can governments do? Um, by the way, the other thing is, is do we really have a free market in mm -hmm. technology? Silicon Valley is the product of huge federal American security, CIA, and national security um, um, military investment into Northern California and into Southern California. Mm -hmm. California is still the richest place in the world. 34,000, 34 million people with a GDP per capita of $79,000 uh, a year. Mm -hmm. And we have a bigger... Um, uh, GDP than France with, with half the population. Okay. Why is that? We don't have any water. Mm -hmm. We don't have, uh, we don't have as much culture as I would like, but what do we have? We have these phenomenal research universities, a huge mm -hmm. amount of public universities, huge numbers of public universities doing high tech research. And by the way, who goes to those universities? People from Asia have gone traditionally to those universities. From Taiwan, my university, South Korea, my university, Stanford, the same thing. Um, even Japan um, and China, mm -hmm. lots of people, okay? This university complex of high-tech knowledge is enormous, and the government has played a huge role in it. By the way, venture capital only followed the government investment. So if you say, I want to open my economy for tech to get venture capital, well, the venture capital ain't going to come without the research investment. Mm -hmm. It's also more complicated than that, as everybody knows. Mm -hmm. So what does the government do? Um, I believe that with AI, we're going to have to really do something. But mm -hmm. what? And the fact is, is that if the AI creators in America don't actually tell the government to some extent what to do, it will not know. There's going to have to be a partnership between public and private. That is what works over and over again. We see the biggest success in a partnership, then competitions, and then entrepreneurialism too. I have no answer for this question. <laughs> I only have stories mm -hmm. that explain the situation. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I mean, I do think, but I do think this. So yeah, should Google be broken up at search engines? Sure, but then I'll just keep using Google. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, like they have such market advance. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked about computer chips versus potato chips. Right. If you make the market advances in technology, mm -hmm. then then no one can actually catch up to you in tech. It's mm -hmm. really, really hard because the advances are so huge, they're quantum advances. So, so for example, yeah. By the way, the one, one of the few countries that I think can really make these advances is Korea because it already has footholds in all of these things. It needs more operating system stuff. It needs more AI. It's a, mm -hmm. it's relatively small country, but think of where it stands mm -hmm. in the tech economy. It stands high. It's high mm -hmm. up. Israel and Korea are the two small countries mm -hmm. and maybe the Netherlands a little bit. Um, but Israel and Korea are like these small countries which have done incredible stuff and play a huge role in this. Mm -hmm. But that's also because they're highly connected to the United States and Japan, and it's super complicated. I don't mm -hmm. know if that, this is a bad answer. Well, Kid, you are reserving yourself, but uh, what you have said has uh, seems to have some substance, not only this question, but also the earlier question. That is, uh, what it, it occurs to me that um, that corporatist type of practice, practice is already being practiced everywhere in the world, especially when it comes to high tech industry. Right. And maybe Korea, South Korea is one of the very few countries that are not realizing this fact, this reality. So we are, you know, we 
have already you know, developed incredible high level of industry, but we are still being uh, confused in the ideological level, either free market thought or non-free market thought. We are being confused in this way. I mean, well, I mean, all right, so this is true. Colbert is the visionary of a high-tech national industry. And how did he do that? It was by hiring the finest brains, mm -hmm. creating state research universities, massive national libraries, um, uh, observatories, laboratories, everything. He created a system of, of I mean, I, I just gave that presentation. You saw all the things that he did. Mm -hmm. um, so he understood that to have a high-tech industry, the first thing you need are, are highly funded institutions that are international where you hire the best brains from around the world. You cannot become nationalistic in the brain industry mm -hmm. because the brains are few and far apart and you need right. them. One thing that I see that's mm -hmm. still the advantage of the United States is when I sit in the University of Southern California and I look into my classroom, I see in my front row kids from China, Korea, Taiwan, right. Pakistan, India, Nigeria. We're still on top mm -hmm. because all those brains, mm -hmm. if they come out and mm -hmm. they're good enough to get the job, they'll get the visa. They can stay. Right. And you know how much each one of those brains is worth? Mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. Better if they go into companies and not consulting doesn't create much wealth as far as I'm concerned. Wealth mm -hmm. creation is. So, yes, Colbert was a visionary of this. Smith believed mm -hmm. that industry was dependent on agricultural production mm -hmm. and that agriculture was more productive right. because nature pushed the hands <laughs> of production. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Right. Right. And I don't think, I mean, are any of you two agrarian thinkers? <laughs> no. I mean, sorry. As much as, by the way, uh. we're, again, the best Korean beef is not sold outside of Korea, by the way. Talk about free market problem here, okay? I'm yeah. a little upset because I want to have that Korean beef mm -hmm. because we have now very good Korean steakhouses in Japan. Mm -hmm. I want the Korean beef. Uh -huh. Maybe I can't afford it, though. Maybe I can't afford it. You should definitely come to Korea and uh, have some beef <laughs> with us, eh? Uh. <laughs> Of course, of course. Yeah, it is uh, the how? What time is it in in Paris? It is um twelve uh, fifty. You should go to your for your lunch, and uh, we are very grateful for having your precious time for our interview. And um, I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, that's oh. great. These are really good. By the way, in America, we are not having such um complex discussions because there's still such a fear around free market thought of saying that it might not be right. Uh -huh. There is a religion of free market thought, even if people who don't believe it, mm -hmm. there's a fear to say somehow it's wrong or whatever, or to even question it. Mm -hmm. you, you know that my book was attacked in America. I mean, uh -huh. ruthlessly attacked. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have seen some articles from the internet that attacking your book. Yeah, mostly from Mises Inst Institute and some other, you know, fundamentalist but, believe, believers in market thought. Yeah. But also big newspapers, they didn't attack my idea, they attacked my footnotes, um, <laughs> which, you know, is pretty, yeah. footnotes were ir irrelevant, irrelevant. Yeah. It's so, uh, very coward-like. Uh, there's still a very, very big fear. So mm -hmm. I want to tell you one last story, and you don't have to put it up there, but yeah. um, in a number of universities, there was an idea to give my book to the the trustees of universities who are billionaires who fund universities okay. and when the scandals began they didn't do it so it's a book that is seen to be possibly scaring many billionaires although some of my billionaire friends like the book mm -hmm. any of them they want free they want the traditional free markets because they're billionaires mm -hmm. they, they have market share they have market mm -hmm. dominance mm -hmm. and they're not totally wrong mm -hmm. but um this fear over my book in the United States has been quite revealing. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think it's interesting that in Asia, there is at least more openness to try and discuss these questions mm -hmm. to figure out what works. Because I do sense in Asia, there's much less of an ideological uh, attachment. And right. this is why the, the recent um, embrace 
of mm-hmm. orthodox free market thought by the president of Korea is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, historic. We are all, we are again grateful for your bra- the braveness and uh, bringing up the subject by you know, publishing this book. It is a brave act. We- I didn't I didn't know it was bravery until after the fact. <laughs> I, was, I was not brave going into okay. this. Okay, let's brave. say it's uh, ex post <laughs> bravery, okay? <laughs> like most braveries. Okay. Yeah, unintended bravery. I right? was, un, I was taken there unintendedly, yes. <laughs> yes. I think we should uh, call it the day, uh, call it the night, and uh, we should, uh, we should get away. <laughs> okay, can we down. Okay. Hey, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. See you soon. See you soon. Okay.